Hello. Right, back with some more voice of cards. I was going to play Overwatch 2. That was going to be the plan for tonight, but... Could not get it to load. Couldn't get signed into the servers. I guess the launch day busyness, I guess. So, just... We'll do a chapter of house uh, voice of cards instead. And I'll try Overwatch 2 tomorrow. Right, picking up from where we left off, which was absolutely just fucking that town up. And I don't think we can actually go back into it, can we? The poison continues to issue forth from the city. Considering the danger, it would be wise to give the place a wide berth. Yeah, we're going to come back here at some point and that entire town is just going to be like... Everyone's either going to be dead or just like desperate or insane or something. It's going to be a bad time. Oh, I can't just quick travel to those. A great river of tinder water stretches out before you. While the liquid no longer burns, it would still be dangerous to attempt swimming. Okay, fair enough. You start to hesitate thinking that there is no crossing. When Polka shouts, da -na -na -na, he is carrying an iron board, apparently having brought it back from the Lake of Fire. Is a single board going to be long enough? Just as before, you and your allies decide to build a bridge across the river. Okay, I guess it is. I guess he had more than one. Oh, I need to turn fast forward on again. I keep forgetting every single time that it turns that off. Whenever you boot the game back up. <clears throat> you can't do it in fights. Ugh. God, it feels so slow at regular speed. Uh, are you weak to water? No, but I'll take a crit. God, it's so slow without the high speed stuff. Speed change, there we go. There we go. That's better. Your group crosses the river, and as you celebrate, you take notice of the tough, rock studded expanse of land stretching before you. Your sand skiff was made for moving over the sands, so it'll be difficult to go any farther aboard it. Oh, poor Sandskiff. Remodel it. You propose remodeling the Sandskiff, and Polka is first to agree. Legol's face is uneasy as he mutters, Don't do anything weird to it. Polka explains that three materials will be needed to convert the Sandskiff. After some quick preparations, you decide to split up to locate what you need. Uh, who are you checking on? Can be illuminating. Oh, changing main character for a bit. Uh, start with him. Everyone left the party, but Legol. Polka asks Legol to find something that could be used as wheels. Wheels. Legol is skeptical that something like that will just be lying around. But he sets off to look, nonetheless. Uh... I mean, the mines seem like the obvious one, don't they? Legol recalls that there was a cart in the mine near Steelborough. 
Though hesitant to return to such a dangerous place, he can't make excuses when he thinks of how hard a certain subterran must be searching. He decides to take the sand skiff alone back to the mine. Do I actually have to like solo travel? Oh, it's just warped me straight back there. Can't use bellwethers. Okay. We're doing little solo segments. There is indeed a cart in the mine, as Legol recalled. And, as one would imagine, it has wheels. Legol attempts to remove the wheels from the mine cart. But suddenly, a monster emerges from behind it. Okay, he should be strong enough to take both of these. Easy enough. In fact, I don't think either of them can actually hurt him. Or hurt him very much. With the monster defeated, Legol collects the minecart wheels. The slain monster's eyes are wide open. Um, should its eyes? Legol gently closes the monster's eyes. Sorry. Having done what he set out to do, Legol decides to head back to the sand skiff. Choice again? Yeah. Okay. Looks like. Uh. What happens if I do don't check on anyone? Does it don't bring everyone back together? I imagine it does. Uh, let's do Trallis. Everyone left the pipe, but Trallis. Asks Trallis to find some durable cord, despite feeling a little sluggish. Trollis takes off to the south, eager to help the group. Okay, so I'm not revisiting a prior area. Trollis wanders the area, searching for some durable cord or rope, but turns up nothing. What now? Uh... I mean, she does use whips. Can we use a whip as rope or a planter? The thing is, I I think the whip is probably going to be the right choice. But does that mean I lose a weapon? Let's try the plant rope. Alice looks around, trying to find a plant that she could braid into rope. Crap. The region is so arid, though, that it proves a futile effort. Well, Trollis her whip it is. Her possessions, looking for some durable cord. Inside, she finds a whip from her apprenticeship. She must have brought it along by mistake. It once belonged to the ringmaster of the circus. So she just had a second weapon on her the whole time. Looking over the whip brings back memories. The ringmaster was... Good person? Fantastic person! Ringmaster smell like animals. Fantastic person. Trollis spends some time reminiscing as she gazes at the whip, but then realizes, not cord, she says, tossing it away. Hey, wait, don't, like, throw it away. Hey, wait, whip strung. Could be cord. Realizing that a whip could work in place of a cord, Trollis decides to return to the sand skiff. Well, it's just her checking on. Polka asks you to locate a long, sturdy pole. Trollis dashes off to the south, so you decide to head north so that you all can cover more ground. 
Hello? Because you're by yourself for the first time in a long while. The solitary search makes you feel a bit lonesome. Did we find like a little pond or something? Your thoughts drift inexorably to your comrades. Who do you think of? Uh, Charles, I guess, because she seems like the odd one out of the group. Your thoughts turn to Trollis. Her awkward way of speaking somehow only accentuates her sweetness. On top of that, she cares deeply about her companions and has tenacity to spare. And she's the only one of the group that doesn't hate monsters as well. And back when you faced the Flame Primal, she pushed herself so hard to save you from certain death. You can't help but be a little concerned about her. Oh, we just gone through the entire crew. Okay. Your thoughts turn to Polka. Polka's breadth of knowledge has been an incredible boon. <laughs> and also a headache, since said knowledge is the source of his unceasing chatter. While he's typically an affable fellow, you do sometimes spot an unexpected iciness in his expression. Perhaps it comes from his hatred of monsters. Mm. And Legol. Your thoughts turn to Legol. Legol can be somewhat brusque, but deep down he's a supportive person. He seems to care for Polka and Trollis too. From time to time though, you spot a lonely, sad look on his face. Perhaps due to his difficult past being treated like human livestock. Your crew of friends has grown little by little. But with them at your side, you no longer feel as lonely as you once did. While you were lost in thought, a monster has found you. Yeah, hell yeah. We're going to use his staff as the... You're alone, fight anywhere. You're alone, run for it. Fight anywhere. You decide to summon up all your courage and fight. We're going to use his weapon as whatever the... We were looking for. Like a rod? Is that what we were sent to find? Master brandishes a weapon whose handle is a long, sturdy... There we go. Pole. The exact kind Polka needs. <laughs> Okay, you're a bit tougher. God damn. Okay, I'll take a mutual miss. Okay. Let's take off 20 health. Jesus Christ. Your battle with the monster has landed you a long, sturdy pole that Polka should be happy with. Having done what you set out to do, you decide to head back to the sand skiff. With what Polka requested in hand, you beat feet to meet back up with the others. Head back to the skiff. The group meets back up, having gathered all three of the things needed to modify the sand skiff. You've brought the sturdy pole, Legol has the wheels, and Trollis has the whip. Are you sure I can use your whip? Polka asks, and Trollis gives a little nod. Accidentally brought lots of ringmaster's whips. Trollis turns her bag upside down. And as advertised, a number oh, okay. of tumble to the ground. So it's okay. It is sentimental, but she's got multiple of them, so it's not a deal at all. Gets a distant look on his face, a bit of pep in his step. Polka starts zipping around the sand skiff, making modifications. 
a few hours later. Hey, those are some good-looking wheels. To the sands gif are finished. The vehicle should be able to pass through the rocky wasteland without issue now. The group Pardon is me? thrilled, but suddenly, Trollis collapses. Polka hurries over to examine her. Somehow, she's suffering the effects of Tinderwater poison. She looks as though she's in a lot of pain. It's because of the fight. You hold Trollis close, but can do little else. This does turn your thoughts back to the events at the Lake of Fire. The battle with the Flame Primal flashes through your mind. During the struggle, Trollis threw herself in harm's way to protect you from the Primal's attack. The poison must have entered her body through the wound she sustained in the process. Despite downing some of Polka's medicine, Trollis remains languid. It seems that the effect isn't very strong. She needs a sanitary place to rest, Polka says, and the group decides to try to find one. Yeah, because we're still like right next to the poison water. So let's get the hell out of here. Ho there! A man, breathless and plump, suddenly jumps out in front of your group as you search for a place where Trollis can rest. You can't help but feel that you remember this man. You're from the circus. Recognition dawns in you, and you're sure this is the ringmaster of the circus. At least, until he flatly denies it, saying you've confused him with someone else. Uh-huh. Trollis rises unsteadily from the deck of the Sandskiff, tilts her head to the side, and says, You not ringmaster? The man looks at Trollis for a moment, then breaks into a delighted smile. Oh ho, you're one of my brothers from the circus. As he explains, uh -huh. this man is the younger brother of the circus ringmaster. Eh, yeah, small world, I guess. He works as a merchant who travels the world buying and selling all manner of rare articles. And to that end, he wastes not a moment in trying to strike up some business. Perhaps a gander at my wares, then. You decide to... Ask if there's somewhere to rest. You briefly explain Trollis's condition, and ask the man if he knows of a good place to rest. Why didn't you say so sooner? I've got some good info on that front. He replies with a wink. The merchant shares that he has heard of a village to the west, wherein resides a brilliant apothecary. Very convenient. He's said to be a rather crabby fellow, but with any luck, you can get some medicine from him. And on top of that, find a place to rest. Two birds with one stone. You say a few words of thanks and quickly head off to the west in search of the village. The man calls after you. I'll be here with my compatriots for a while, so do pop by later. His compatriots. Aha! Uh -huh. The roving market. Let's take a look. I assume this is just going to be... Yeah, shops and things. Since we no longer have access to a village. The merchant glances over at you with a troubled look on his face. You ask him if something is the matter. For reasons I can't explain, I need a wolf. Could you catch one for me? He pleads. Uh, we have one. Procures a picture and shows it to I think. It looks like this. I'd like one with a beautiful shiny coat, 
he elaborates. It should be two stars at the very least. Uh, I think we have that. Stars, you ask? To which he explains that each monster has a star-based ranking. The stronger the monster, the more stars it has. Of course, I shall see that you are handsomely rewarded for your effort, he tells you. Uh, yeah, we'll accept it. Yeah, we've got a three-star one. Do we lose it? Or is it just a check to see? Then take out a wolf card from your case. Is it just to check to see if we have one? A delighted smile stretches across his face, and he asks if he can have some of its fur. Once you hand a tuft over... Okay, so he's not actually asking for the monster itself, he's just asking for a component from it. it ...with his own hair. Behold, he exclaims with a grin, I'm even more dashing than before, no? Okay, so at least we're not losing the monster cards. To make a good impression on all of our patrons. After all, I'm the first person they see, and how I look influences the credibility of this entire business, he explains. After he's finished arranging the wolf fur on his head, he thanks you and hands you your reward. Okay, cool. 100% chest chance. Oh. I figured there'd be more of these, but I didn't think there'd be like a whole ranking system for it. Okay. The merchant, recognizing your monster catching prowess, wants you to bring him an orc child next. <laughs> Just like the wolf, he asks for one that's two stars or above. Orc child. I don't think we have one of those. Children are said to live in the desert, but dislike the sun's powerful rays and tend to hide away in dark places. Okay. You make note of the information and bid the man farewell. From the mines, I take it? Okay, so this is going to be like a long... quest chain kind of deal. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Let's take a look around all of the shops. Monster Tamer. Our pet shop. What have you got? Uh, that's the only thing that's new. 12 damage if roll is 5 or greater. Ugh, no. 12 damage isn't much. Uh, your... The inn. In, yes. And the innkeeper says, Journey's road is long, but our steps upon it become lighter with companionship. Don't worry about paying tonight. Instead, go spend lots of money at the other shops, she concludes with a wink. Well, we'll take the rest because Ale is super injured. All right, you're the item shop. Uh, I don't necessarily think there's anything I need to buy. Yeah. Amara, let's take a look. Do you have anything new? Because the last place didn't. I didn't have much new. the rings. Do we have one of these? I feel like we do. But it's not worth... Yeah, it's not as good as what they've currently got. Yeah, let's not bother with that. Double check. Do we have an orc child? Have you captured an orc child? The merchant asked. Oh, I do have one. Remember. No, I don't. One star. You take the card out from your case 
and summon the monster. Ah, it's the right monster, but the wrong rank, the merchant tells you. Please get one of a higher rank. You nod and turn on your heel, determined to capture an even more powerful beast. All right, fair enough. All right, let's play some cards. Play. Uh, we won an ad events one, so include all. It's the last game type we need to win. <clears throat> Oh yeah, there's new cards we've not seen yet. So we have King and Queen, and I can't remember if we had Jacks yet or not. I don't think we did. Ugh, seriously, I can't make anything with that? Okay, um, keep the nine. No, I want to keep the nine. Uh, pick the wrong thing. Uh, that was silly of me. Right, keep the seven. Queens. Oh, we've not seen that before. Oh, I just gave him that one, didn't I? Oh, there's a four, five, six. Ugh. Destroys all ha cards in the pod. Oh, that's a pair effect. It's not a straight effect. Oh, thank God. Right, I can get some points here. Uh, nope. We are going five, six, seven. Doubled up to 36 points. Hell yeah. And we'll get rid of the seven. He's going to get another turn. Lost your turn, I think. Oh no, it's rest on the three. I'll look, but you lost your turn anyway. Ha. Okay, you've lost your turn. Still hasn't got a turn yet. That's two turns in a row they've missed. All right, come on. A. Uh, let's not draw anything. Uh, we have... Yeah. If a set makes three cards straight, make the selected opponent rest. Uh, you rest. You've got the most points. Somebody just needs to draw a six, and they've got a shit ton of points there. Oh! <gasps> they have to spend the turn remaking there. Ah, oh, that sucks for them. I'm 
triple seven. Oh. Right, yes, the Joker card. That's the new thing for this set of rules. Uh, no, let's not draw anything. Ah, the Joker. Pass to the right one set from each player. Oh, and it's random each time, isn't it? Ah, oh, it's my highest point total. But I got even more points instead. I'm fine with that. Uh, do do do. <sighs> Let's make a pair of fives. I know it's not much points, but it does get them off the board. So that's all of the fives in play now, I think. Hey, reverse turn order. I will take that. Draw a jack. Come on, let me draw a jack. Now. Upon your next action, gain one card or I don't know. They're on a two or higher. But I'd have to sacrifice four points in order to get that effect. Yeah, we'll make that. You know what? I'm far enough ahead in points wise that I will take that. Okay, they've got their high straight there. Or a pair of queens. Oh, they can make a 10. Jack Queen, okay. Are they gonna make me rest? Yeah, of course. Son of a bitch. I wonder if I lose that on my next turn. Because I'm going to have to rest anyway. Okay, cool. I lose them both. much there. I so thought it was going to pick me there. So unless he draws a jack, he can't make anything. Or an eight. He missed his turn anyway. Okay, what do we have? Yeah, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, eight, nine, ten. None of those cards have straight special effects. Oh, this one does. Uh, 
God, I'm just not paying attention at all. Uh, you rest. Get rid of you. I have 99 points. Jesus Christ. Uh, get rid of the three. So I'm not just giving somebody a pair of sixes. Right, yes. You can make straights with aces, queens and kings. <gasps> no. No. Not this. Anything but this. I'm still in the lead. Thank God. Oh, there was still a five left. You have to rest. And I get the final turn. Doesn't make a difference. There's only one card to draw. No, no event cards. Thank you. I just not make this? Oh, you're gonna make me. Oh, I have to trigger this effect. Roll a die, destroy all players' sets which include that number, including your own. Oh, this could change things. One. Okay, I don't have a one. Good. Destroys one of your sets. Destroys your highest point set. Get fucked. Get rid of you. A. The boy says in amazement, placing a commemorative prize in your hand. Cool. I'm not going to use that. It looks terrible. But I've got it. And I've got his flip side story now. So is he the last game parlor? I thought there'd at least be like another town or two. Back to exploring. I did not think I'd win that the first time. I should probably save. Battle time. So I don't have to do that again. to paralysis. Okay. Right. Save. We haven't had an event in a while. Like an actual random event rather than the this place there we go. eerily familiar. You open your pack and fish out a scrap of paper. Oh. You knew it. This is where the map says there's hidden treasure. A map depicting treasure between a lake, white mountains, and rocky crags. You feel around on the ground for a moment and soon discover an unnatural swell in the dirt. You claw at the earth with reckless abandon. Success. Buried treasure. Ecstatic, you fling open the lid 
and stash its contents in your bag. Increases crit chance. Very nice. Okay, so that wasn't actually a random event. It was a you found a treasure Get event. Ooh, hello. Uh, Get rid of you guys. Okay, you're not weak to light. Fuck. And you hit hard. God damn. Uh, let's paralyze you. Weak to paralysis again. Uh, do do do. Yes, heal. Sometimes you get lucky. And you finish it off. <clears throat> All right, Village of Light. You locate a small village. This is probably the place the merchant mentioned where the apothecary lives. However, monsters oh. suddenly appear, and they're headed straight for the town. You can't let them attack the town, for Trollis's sake too. You take off running to stop the monsters. Yeah, what have we got? Cool. Extra health on heals. Uh, let's give this a try, see how much damage it does. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not good. Neither's that. Jesus. Uh, water. Better than nothing. Cool. Uh, you take that out that one. I'll try. Oh my god, dude. Okay. Uh... Let's get you on heal duty. Let's see if we can take this one out. Not quite. God, that one takes six gems. I think they're better against groups of enemies, I think. Uh, let's see if we can freeze it. Nope. And it missed. God damn it. Alright, just attack. Okay, he's doing absolutely no damage to these things, so he should just generate gems instead.
Cool. Unbeknownst to any, you manage to avert the danger. Now Trollis needs help. Hurry into the village. Yeah, we'll enter. You and Lagol enter the village, leaving Polka caring for Trollis on the sand skiff. He's left the pie. No sooner do you Hello. The village than a man's voice calls out to you. This here's the village of light. Make yourself at home and rest your wearied spirits. The fact that it's called the village of light has made me very suspicious. The villager wears a curious headpiece, but seems polite and courteous. You get directly to the point and ask him if he knows about the apothecary. Ah, that would be me, he says, before offering to mix up some medicine if you're in a hurry. What do you do? Um, explain the symptoms. You explain Trollis's symptoms, and the man calling himself an apothecary smiles and says he can help right away. Uh, how much will it cost? Afraid of the answer, you ask what it will cost. The man calling himself the apothecary laughs and assures you he has no need of payment. Mm hmm. This is not what we were told he was like. The apothecary hardly seems crabby at all. So you check again with him that he really is the one you're looking for. He answers that coming to this village changed him made him realize that people need to live by helping each other. The apothecary suggests you take a wander about town while he mixes up the medicine. He adds, the folks about town are kind souls one and all, so feel free to ask them if you need anything. Uh -huh. Legol says that he'll get Trollis and returns to the sand skiff. You decide to walk around the village and find what you'll need to care for your friend. Oh, I don't trust this at all. And now I'm by myself. Huh, not much to the town really, is there? Statues? A giant statue towers above you. Stern eyes seeming to glare a warning to trespassers. Oh, is this going to be like a weed cult thing? The boy looks at you and says, This would look nice on you, miss. And hands you a crown made of gorgeous artificial flowers. You try to pay for it, but the boy counters with a smile. I gave it to you because I wanted to. That was nice. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a cult. After hearing your tale, the woman hands you her food. Make sure you all eat up and get all your nutrients. And if there isn't enough, you just let me know and I'll make more. Ha ha. She finishes with a hearty laugh. Uh. The old man says, no person is an island. That's why we need to join hands and help one another. Oh, I don't trust this at all. All right, innkeeper. <laughs> the proprietor of the inn beams at you and says, don't worry your head over payment. Stop in and make use of one of our rooms as much as you like. You offer a word of thanks and feel a weight lift off your chest. Now Trollis will be able to rest somewhere comfortable. Those are the same kind of animal ears that Trollis has. Are they all gonna like freak out when she shows up? The medicine is finished. You take it from him and then try to head back to Trollis. But there seems to be quite some commotion at the entrance of town. Wondering what could have happened, you hurry over.
Okay, that music took a turn to something a bit more dramatic. A crowd of villagers has thronged the entrance to town. On the opposite side are Legol, Trollis, and Polka. Their earlier kindness seemingly an implausible memory. The group shouts, Get out now. You realize that the villagers are yeah. firing daggers at Trollis. They seem somehow furious at her. Even the apothecary, who only just handed you medicine for her, has an expression of utter rage on his face. What would he do? Uh, protect her. You attempt to intervene and protect Trollis, but the villagers continue to bellow their anger. Suddenly, you hear a serene voice call out over the crowd. Enough. At the sound of it, the people fall incredibly quiet. A mysterious girl, young in years, emerges from within the awkwardly silent crowd. Okay, I know I've seen that artwork on the save screen, but it's only just occurred to me now that that's a reuse of the queen drawing from... Uh, Dragon Isle. Yes, I think it's the artwork. Because obviously each game like reuses some of the artwork and like modifies it. So I'm pretty sure that's the queen from the first game. I beg your forgiveness for the way you have been treated by the villagers, she says. If you require a place for your sick friend to rest, please come to the Shrine of Light, she finishes before leading the way. All right. Let's see what's up. Now, is this place going to be a dungeon or is it just going to be a... As soon as you arrive at the shrine in which the girl lives, you put Trollis in a bed to rest. You're relieved that you've managed things for the time being. When you speak with the girl, she says, I've been waiting for you all. You're a subterran, right? You haven't told the girl anything, so how is it she knows that? I know more than that. She goes on to describe much about your group, the monster attack on your village, Legol's cruel treatment. What happened to Polka's parents? What's your deal? Legol says, unnerved. The girl answers, the power of prophecy. Huh. She explains that due to her power, the people revere her as a religious guru. You've never heard that word before. And so you ask, guru? Uh, like a Teach? You ask if a guru is some kind of teacher, and Legol nods. Yeah, I think you could say they're a sort of teacher. Polka adds, a guru is the founder of an ideological group, or the leader of one. In any event, the guru is clearly important to the village. You decide to ask her about the place. Let's see why the villagers were nice and why they got angry. That's gonna make us do both. Why the villagers were so kind at first. The guru explains in a measured voice. The village, she explains, adheres to a doctrine called the light faith. She goes on to explain that the foundational principle of the light faith is to be kind to people. Thus, the villagers treated you with great kindness. Mm-hmm. So why'd they get mad? You ask why the once kind villagers became so angry. The guru explains in a measured voice. This remote village has, she explains, been the victim of many monster attacks over the years. 
which in turn means that many of its inhabitants despise all monsters. That hatred eventually took root in the village as a kind of religious doctrine. Thus, their behavior when they saw Trollis. Huh. And so there have been two absolute doctrines in this village. Be kind to people and kill monsters. She gazes at the room where Trollis is sleeping and asks, Your friend is a monster, yes? I'm not entirely sure what she is. Uh, she's not a... You hesitate to reply, having vaguely suspected what Trollis actually is. The guru amends her words. Forgive me. Perhaps that expression... Uh, half human, half monster. Also human. She is half human and half monster. What are your thoughts on that? She asks. Is she a monster to be hated or a friend to be treasured? Uh, friend. It's true that monster blood may flow in Trollis's veins. Monsters, things to be hated. But as you've traveled together, seeing you falter, the guru offers another apology. The villagers were discourteous to your friend, and for that, I am sorry. Many of them lost family to monster attacks and are seized with hatred. I ask you to forgive them, she continues, her voice tinged with hurt. Uh, <laughs> ah, right. Your group wishes to go to New Terra, yes? She says, breaking the silence. Stunning that your powers could even tell you that, says Polka in a low voice and the guru nods serenely. She explains that there is a stone tablet in the ruins of a religious edifice to the northeast of town. Said tablet has the way to New Terra recorded on it. Hmm. However, you should know, monsters have nested in the ruins, she adds. Of course. There's information on New Terra to be had though, so you decide to go anyway, despite the danger. Check on Trollis, who we left in a room with another lady who hates monsters. Trollis is sleeping soundly. Quite relieved, you thank the woman watching over her. She seems annoyed, but when you inform her that you're headed to the ruins, she quickly turns her attitude around and bows her head. Please get rid of the monsters living there and get the stone tablet back. The ruins were evidently a sacred site for this village. One where marriages, funerals, prayers for bountiful harvests, and other important rites were carried out. And the tablet was used in those ceremonies. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, we'll kill the monsters. That's what you want to hear. You accept the woman's request. Assuring her that any monsters who cross your path will meet a swift end. You've no sooner gotten your response out than Trollis's eyes fly open and she bursts out, I come too. While she is a little unsteady yet, the apothecary's medicine seems to have done its work. You try to convince her to rest a little longer. But she insists on going to the ruins with you. Yeah, I'd take her with us. I wouldn't trust leaving her here. At length, her persistence wins out. And you begrudgingly agree to take her along and head for the ruins. Good. We're not going to come back and just find like the woman stabbing her. The guru gives a little smile and says, I'm sure you will be all right. I have foreseen that you will be able to obtain the tablet and return safely. Thank you for that vote of confidence. Enhanced by the power of precognition.
Ah, okay, there is a pathway up here. You spot an open air stall. Oh, cool. Yes. Stop by, let's take a look. Pay money for the goods. How much determined by the roll of the dice? 20% premium. I don't have any gold nuggets. Hmm, okay. Uh, is there any of this I don't need? You, I don't use you. I don't use the Soothe Stones either. And they are worth quite a bit. Keeping them. They're super useful. Initiate flight from combat. It's super easy to run from fights anywhere, so they're kind of pointless. Yeah, I'll do. Oh, yes, Bizarre Rock. Let's have a look. Okay, we've got a Fear Rock on our hands. I maybe should have used one of the cards that guarantees treasures. Ah. Ah, damn. I want to... Damn it. I think that card is going to be super annoying to try and get a hold of. We got lucky by getting the Aqua Rock version of it earlier. Battle time. Oh. Huh. I wasn't expecting them to just show up in regular fights. Okay, that makes it a lot less difficult then. Oh, that's shit damage. Um, you just take it out. Let's take a look at rings. Is it worth? Yes, okay. Swap your ring out for that one. So you've got a higher crit chance. I thought that would be where the temple was. I assume that's going to be a pathway that leads up to the next area. So it looks like snowy location. Like snowy ground. What did we have on trials? Uh... Okay. That's a lot of damage those guys can just do to me. Hey, cool. Oh, they were both good choices. Although I think I have the wear rat. 
two star, I think. I'm not sure. There it is. It's probably a chest. Very nice. Withered foliage dots the wasteland. Your eyes keen with hunger. Spy something that looks like the leaves and vines of a potato. Heck yeah, it's probably going to be a monster. You're so starved, you don't <clears throat> care if they're rotten. You grab hold of the vines and get ready to pull. How hard do you pull? Easy does it. Let's not. Uh, upon closer inspection, these uh, awfully thin potatoes. Uh, it doesn't really budge the roots. Most really. Okay, easy does it. Upon closer inspection, these are awfully thin for potato vines. You keep pulling and suddenly feel it come loose. Well, the vines have anyhow. You decide it's not worth digging out the tuber by hand and go on your way. Ah, oh, okay, wrong choice. Can I get that event again? Let's see if you're weak to fire. You're not, but that was still good damage. Oh, she has the one star version of the rat attack. Okay. A masterful victory. Let's see if we can get an event. Hey. Ah. It's the shop again. Alright. A six would be super useful here. Two. Damn. Wholesale. I'll keep a hold of that nugget then. Because if I can get a six, that's an extra 600 gold. Or an extra 400 on a... Four or five roll. Jesus, this place is huge. Oh, it's these guys. Uh, let's see. You didn't do very much damage to them, so it's no point in you attacking. How much does this do? Okay. Can you finish it off? You, no, you can't. I should have had him heal her instead. Never mind, she's leveled up, so she's fully healed now. Right. Get him. Are you weak to fire? Okay. 
treasure. Light attack plus four to all enemies. Okay. Heal her. No, because she leveled up. I complete. My god, my brain's just not engaging. That was stupid of me. May as well heal himself. Cool, that's the worm's flip side story. straightforward we haven't had any new weapons in a while the shops haven't really provided us with any new equipment really aside from a couple of new types of rings but that's about it I guess this game it's more about the monster cards than it is about gear treasure it's the stealer is there just one floss of this I thought there was more than one I could have swore it said floor one when we walked into this place Myself, I'll take it. Okay, and that's this entire right hand side. Done. Oh, hello, skeleton dude. We've not seen you yet. He has to be resistant to light, surely. 
No, he's weak. Okay. Okay, she needs a heal. You finish it off. I expected nothing less. I wouldn't mind getting that skeleton. Because I assume that skeleton's thing is going to be like a dark damaging attack. A great statue stands before you, large enough that you have to crane your neck to look up at it. You wonder how much historical value such a thing might have. Alright, I assume that's another pathway? I guess not. Finally! And we got the two-star version of it as well. Very nice. Is it worth giving that to anybody? Let's take a look. Uh, probably Trallis. Let's have a look. Attack buff is useful. Attack plus five. That is useful, but it costs a lot. For what I'm getting. Three gems for attack plus five. Where the wasp that Polka has is attack plus four for a single. So that is pretty costly. I've not actually had a chance to use it yet. Um, let's swap that out for... There we go. Swap it out for a move that costs the same gems, but does more damage to more enemies. Oh, another new enemy type. Are you weak to fire? Guess we'll never learn what you were. You were weak to light. Oh. Hmm. I wonder if it's actually worth swapping. The centaur and the gargoyle around. Because if Pulke generates a gem on the first turn, then Ale will be able to use 
the gargoyle when there's more enemies about. Oh, hello. Deal damage equal to the value of two rolled dice to all enemies. Ooh. Interesting. Right, let's have a swap around. You take... Yeah. And then you take... Where is it? There. Do I want to give... that to somebody yeah let's swap out the nine damage let's rearrange these a bit okay we'll see how that works aha staircase Give it a try. That's pretty good. That's pretty fucking good. Let's give this a try as well. That's how it's done. Okay, yeah, I like that. I like that better. Let's see what this says. Uh, wedding rites. Two who have pledged their love to one another must exchange that which is worn at all times. That's right, exchange headdresses. <laughs> okay, so we do have a multi floor. Look at Trollis and ask, you okay? She gives a vivacious bounce, assuring you that she's as fine as she looks, and that you don't have to worry. Perhaps she then realizes what you actually mean, so she continues to speak with some brightness in her voice. She reminds you that she has the circus troupe, who accepted her without discrimination. And on top of that, she has kind friends who worry about her and do their best to nurse her back to health when she falls ill. So of course she's all right. Oh, She's a sweet one. So, we'll do my best. Be big girl, for troop, and for friends. Oh, Charles, you're the best. Uh, I assume this floor is going to be massive as well. It's pretty big. It feels like it's going to be a bit of a maze. So I'm going to be bouncing around all over the place. Amazing. Hey, attack up. I've noticed they're not getting too much in the way of attack ups during level up as well. Again, it feels like the attack is... Like, characters' attack values are being, like, controlled very heavily. Battle time. So you don't just out-damage enemies. Oh, so yeah, she's got the crit ring on, hasn't she? That's why we've had that twice in a row now. 
Why she's used that move, quit, and killed all of the enemies. Oh, hello. I'm going to assume you're not weak to fire. new enemy types that are just showing up for like oh I was not expecting that reaches an antechamber with three arrows inscribed on the floor further in I see you can see a statue and what appears to be some kind of pedestal to the right is a door and by the looks of it your only way onward. Okay, we've still got these two. I just need to sneeze one second. Okay, there we go. Uh, up. The floor sinks slightly when you step on the arrow. And then... Why? The statue moved. Apparently, it moves in the same direction as whichever arrow is stepped on. I'm shook. How could I have possibly ever have guessed that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't need to tutorial this. It's like the most simple thing in the world. Although I think the second page of that was actually something super useful to know. The floor is already recessed. Can't press the same button twice in a row. Okay. Has no apparent effect. You'll have to step on a different arrow. And to the right again. So uh, the up button works, and then back to the left. The statue slides on top of the pedestal, and in that instant, with a groan, the door opens. Relieved that you can finally move on, you decide to head through the door. Okay, so that's going to be our gimmick for this dungeon. Another stealer. To battle. That is a lot of damage to her. Pulk is the only one with a healing move. If I let him heal her, it gets another turn to attack, so it's not worth. Need to keep an eye on her. Guidance. The monsters steal what is precious to us. However, if you believe in the Guru's guidance, you will find hope. You need to heal her. If 
That's fine. She heals when she attacks. And you top her off to full. Another ring protects against bolt health plus five. Take extra cash. Not that I've really had much to spend it on recently, but sure, I'll take it. For whenever something new shows up. So this is our mini boss version of these. All right, generate gems. You light beam them. Hit her with the water. Didn't stand a chance. I think these ones are always guaranteed treasures. Very nice. Okay. Fingers crossed for fire lady. A. Eight fire damage to all enemies. going to be another one of those switch puzzles in this room to battle that's such a good combo I need a party white heal I think. actually know what you do yet. You are weak to light though. Nope, still gonna re remain a mystery for now. Really? That was one space.
These guys have way more health. Is this a special mini boss fight or something? Uh, damage equal to yeah. As soon as we get six or higher, yay! Perfect. That's just like a weird extra difficult fight. Oh my god. The Skull Soldiers, the two stars is deal 1.5 damage. Three stars is deal times two. So is four going to be 2.5 and then th five stars th times three? That's awesome if it is. more cash that I'm not spending yet. Can you one shot? No, not quite. That's how it's done. There we go. What the hell is that? Uh into a wide open space with an array of stone tablets. Your excitement fades <clears throat> as you realize just how many there are. You glance down at your feet and spot a piece of paper on the floor. The scrap has a note written on it. To proceed, align the tablets with matching patterns. Well, that's simple, Ligol says. He approaches the tablets, but then... Okay. The tablets change position entirely on their own. And I didn't bother to remember which ones were which. Okay, yeah, it's just a game of memory. Right, before we do that, just reveal those. To battle. Can okay, not quite a one shot. Alright, let's start with you. What are you? You're an S. You flipped a stone tablet with a different pattern. Try picking another one. Okay. S9. Face W. Yes, that's you are the ninth. You've managed to match two stone tablets. Keep it up. W. S. And face. You've successfully flipped all of the tablets. 
And now... With a groan, the door opens. Feeling a bit mentally fatigued, you decide to head through the door with your friends. Oh yeah, I'm so fa mentally fatigued for doing that. For having to remember four things. Battle time. Okay, so it's not just going to be the moving the statue thing. Every floor, it's going to be a different, weird, standing on buttons thing. Hey, attack up again. some health back hmm okay even if she crits she only gets the regular amount of health recovery for that good to know immunity to paralysis cool Dice rolled by all allies and enemies land on one. Okay. I still don't know what those blue guys actually do. Alright, treasure. Maybe we can find out from these. Inflict random ailment of a target... Well, six or higher, or five or higher in the upgraded version. Three gems. Hmm, I thought there'd be a chest there. Take double XP. I love that I'm just one shot a ton of these fights. To my daughter, I beg you, please forgive me. You are good for nothing, father. I could not live by the creed, nor do any of the things a father ought to do, nor regain the soul of the village. I love you. Okay, that's going to be progress. Fact, this might be the top floor. Based on that entry where so 
I'm going to save before I go in there. <clears throat> Just in case. You know what? Defend. And then Trilus, you finish it off and recover your health back up to max. That's how it's done. Take a quality self. Ah, another stealer. Uh, f funer funerary? Right. Transfer the deceased's headdress to a doll and send uh, and spend 99 days together. Then place it upon a pyre and send it unto the heavens. Never shall we be robbed of our souls by monsters. against light. Two defense and five health. It's pretty good. Right, yeah, let's save before we go in there. I appreciate it glowing the card that's going to progress. A massive statue stands vigil here, looking almost as though it is taking the measure of those who pass through. Let's get all of this revealed before I... Show me what's it going to be. Discovered the stone tablet that has information about New Terra recorded on it. What's going to attack us? You rush over to the tablet, but suddenly, whoa! A monster appears. Oh, that's the monster that's on the Joker card in the cards, the card game minigame. Well, that thing's got to be weak to light, right? Generate gems. Not weak to... Okay. I thought that would be weak to light. It looks like a very shadowy type enemy. Hmm. I need some gems on Tralus's turn. So I can inflict deadly poison with her. Well, to be honest, we're almost taking off half its health already. Resistant dam. Okay. Oh, God, yeah, I need a party heal move. 
But in the meantime... Sometimes you... 1.5 times damage. Hmm, for four gems that wasn't really that good. Cool, I will take two gems. You can spend one on healing trellis. And then, what's your heaviest attack? It is that, isn't it? Alright. Oh, it's attack run out that's why I was thinking like that's way different amount of damage ah you we finally something weak to fire good old crit Go on, Trellis crit as well. Didn't need to. Oh, because she has attack. Oh, of course. From the happenstance cards. Uh, of course. There appears to be some writing on the stone tablet. You ask Polka to decipher it, but the script appears to be from a language that even one of his considerable knowledge has never seen. The four of you decide to ask the guru about the tablet. All right, let's get the fuck out of here. Yes, we've escaped. Uh, we've explored everything, so just insta escape. To exit the ruined edifice immediately. All right, guru. You look at Trollis and say, you don't have to go into the village if you don't want to. She assures you that it's fine and comes along anyway. As you make your way into town, the apothecary approaches. Before you can say anything, the man blurts out an apology to Trollis. Okay. The sudden contrition is a surprise and not just to you. Legol and Polka are clearly taken aback, too. Though I may have been attempting to hold fast to our creed, you are still half-human. My behavior towards you was foul. The Guru must have explained things. Everyone in the village has accepted Trollis by the sound of it. Good. Do we need to heal? Yeah, we do. The proprietor of the inn is smiling at you once again. Please feel free to take a room if you need one. Yeah, we need one. Room for the night, yes. Alright, Guru. You have the stone tablet, which must mean the monster is defeated. I thank you. The guru accepts the tablet and runs a loving hand over it. This little piece of stone is an integral part of our town's rituals. One might go so far as to call it the soul of the village. You find it all a little bit unsettling. Hoping to move the conversation along, you ask what is written on it about Nutera. 
The guru gives a deep bow of the head at your question. I'm afraid that what I said about the tablet having the weight of new terror recorded on it was a fabrication. I'm sorry. You're stuck you at the news. fucking bitch. She lied to you in order to get you to retrieve the tablet. How do you reply? So new terror is... Your shoulders droop, and you struggle to get the words out. So, new terror is... But the guru replies in a solemn voice. You do not need to worry. New terror does exist. And I know the way there. It is found to the north, beyond a massive cliff that towers over the land, called the End Wall. She goes on to explain that to get there, you must travel through the cave to the north. With that, she offers a final prophecy. What you seek shall be found in New Terra. There's cool. There's something desolate in her expression. Oh, of course. <clears throat> I just had a thought. The moment you leave the shrine, you sense that something is amiss. Is the final big end game decision going to be like we have the dis the choice to destroy all monsters, but it's going to kill Trellis in the process, and we have to make like the decision to do it or not? That's my my suspicion for the end game. The village is suffocatingly quiet. Mm hmm. Polka lets out. Uh. A and points at a villager collapsed on the ground. The old man has breathed his last. Stay alert, the goal whispers so that only the group can hear. Um. Oh God, why are you all dead? The old man is dead, his gentle face frozen. They all died happy? The boy is dead, surrounded by artificial flowers. Oh god, did we kill everyone by bringing back the... Though it looks like she is just sleeping, the proprietor is dead. Funeral rites, something like that? The woman is dead, but the hand on her full stomach suggests her end was met in satiety. A bottle of medicine has tumbled over next to the corpse of the apothecary. Having examined several of the bodies, Polka <laughs> the cause of their death appears to have been suicide by poison. Oh, the drug of the Kool-Aid. You remember the desolate expression on the guru's face and you realize you need to rush back to the Shrine of Light. Oh... Literally was a suicide cult. Legol rears up and breaks the door open with a mighty kick. The guru is collapsed, bleeding on the ground. Bleeding? You run over to her and try to help her sit up. Her eyes flutter open and she looks over your group. They have all passed without incident then, she says with a feeble smile. Why? You take one of her limply hanging hands and ask, Why? She said as much. They have a creed here in the village, and that creed is absolute. Oh, Jesus. This is their punishment for attacking Trellis, because they attacked another, another human. So the creed says they have to kill themselves. Be kind to people and kill monsters. And 
death to those who break the creed. Fuck. Hatred for monsters runs deep, having taken root long, long ago. Those feelings cannot be changed, nor can the creed. The guru produces the stone tablet from the ruins. So long as we have this, our souls shall be guided to their rest, she murmurs. Trollis bursts into tears and says that this was all her fault. No says the guru softly it was mine she was prepared for this and invited you in with full understanding of what would happen. oh god that makes it worse she knew this was gonna happen oh that's so fucked despite all of that she still wished to get the stone tablet back from the monster and i am tired now I can finally see mother and father again. They were all tired. The many years of being caught up between their hatred and their creed had made the villagers and the guru alike exhausted with life. With one last word of thanks, the guru gently breathes her last breath. Jesus. Thus did the monster-loathing village pass to dust. There hasn't been a single town so far in this game that we haven't just wandered into and completely fucked up. A visceral demonstration of what happens when you mix faith with hate. Like seriously, every town we've wandered into we've like fucked up in some way. Like, Stanton Village got killed by monsters. Not really our fault. Steel Place, we ended up murdering all of the leaders. Firetown, we destroyed their entire economy. And now we've just like made them all suicide cult themselves. With these guys. <sighs> well, I feel sorry for whoever's in the, the next town. Chapter 5, The End Wall. So we're going to go get the Frost Primal next. You and your companions dig. Dig long, deep holes. Graves. You feel it's only right to give the dead a proper burial. Mm. That's one grave complete. You let out a long sigh. You wonder how the others are faring. Checking on the companions. Right, I think I'm going to save here. For tonight. Oh, what the hell? Old lady and weird fairy kids? From the looks of it. Or maybe they're monster kids. Other half human, half monster. Hmm. We will have to see. Right. That's going to be it for tonight. Tomorrow we'll see if I can actually get into Overwatch 2 and take a look at that. Right. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers. Bye.